Hey guys and girls, it's Ken and Gina here from AK Portugal and welcome to another episode of Portugal Farm Life. Today is olive harvest day. It's actually going to take us a couple of days. Maybe three. Yeah, maybe three. I think last year was about three or four days. Yeah. Uh, and we've got quite a lot of olives on the trees. But fortunately, we have our neighbours here to help us. Uh, this is probably not a good idea to do without a suit. But it's only one piece of tape, so let's try and see if I can do this quick. Every time I get my arm around the corner, they come. There we go. I need to get away. I'm getting buzzed. Our neighbor Joaquin has just arrived with one of his awesome Ford tractors. Joaquin's made an invention and attached to the buckets of this tractor's front end loader part, he's put all of these metal arms and attached to those are nets. So the idea is that you can create a circular funnel type net. And when you harvest the olives and they fall down into the net, they should hopefully end up in the scoop of the tractor. And here comes Joaquin with his olive shaker. And he just has to connect it up to the tractor's battery to give it power. So this olive shaker is basically a carbon fiber pole that has some fingers on the end that vibrate and shake the olives out of the tree. And although most of the olives did actually hit the bucket, there were a lot that either overshot the nets or landed down by the trunk in the centre. So we just decided at the end of the day we're going to go back to the traditional net method of putting nets underneath the trees. And I guess next year version 2 of this I'm sure will be super awesome and I can't wait to see what Joaquin comes up with next. So while Joaquin was away, Gina and I got stuck in put out some nets and carried on harvesting some olives. So it's been all hands on deck. Uh, I think we started at about, um, I don't know, about half past 10 this morning. And then lunch was at about one o'clock until two o'clock. And um, yeah, the time now is, it's nearly three o'clock. And we've done a whole bunch of trees. Hello Mimosa, will you come to help us? Yeah, so we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. Yeah, so we've done 12 trees. 
which is pretty cool. Um, obviously it's three o'clock now, I think the sun goes down at about half past five, so we're definitely not finishing today. But we've made some good progress, some really good progress. Good morning everyone. It is um, day two of the olive harvest and I'm still half asleep. Uh, I have a cup of tea. Uh, you, prob you probably know that I'm not really like much of a tea drinker but I think this is a good occasion to have a cup of tea and wake up. And uh, yeah, Joaquin's just arrived. Joaquin and Costa and we're about to get stuck in. Bon dia. Bon dia. Bon dia. Is uh, fix? Uh, yes. Oh. Ah, okay. The problem is the the cable or uh, a connector. Partiu. Ah, okay. Partiu cable. Cable, yeah, fio, yeah, yeah. Fio. Okay, so not the transformer or okay. No, no. So we're off to a good start, and we are 18 trees down, which is brilliant. Um, you know, we've got the thing working again, the shaker. Uh, but what we've also been doing is we've been pruning some of the trees because uh, last year we didn't get a chance to prune them. So I'm just going to show you an example of one of one of our trees. This one's not actually that bad um, or in comparison to some of the other ones. So we didn't prune any of them this year and as you can see there's just tons and tons of growth in there and what happens is you don't really get airflow through the plant and you get things like funguses and molds and stuff um, but also it's very difficult to shake all of the olives out because you can't get the olive shaker in there. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to give it like a really hard prune and I'll show you an example. We've done one of them here um, and you can see the difference. I mean it's quite a brutal prune as you can see all of the all of the branches and stuff lying here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is entirely done but uh, yeah you can see there's a big difference. There's tons of airspace. So someone someone said that you want to kind of prune them so that a bird could fly straight through and they grow so fast so you don't really have to uh, you know worry they will grow back you want to kind of retain a shape supposedly you want to keep them quite low because uh, what you don't want to be doing is like here where Joaquin is having to reach up so high to get the olives off so yeah we're going to have a lot of these to do soon and then we're going to have a lot of olive branches so we're going to have a massive bonfire <laughs> And you can see Mimo approves of all of this. What are you doing, Mimo? What are you doing? Yeah. She investigates the world with her teeth. Investigate. Mimo's favorite things include biting sticks and digging holes. She uh, sniffs out moles and stuff. She's actually a very good mole killer. I feel very sorry for the moles, to be honest, because, uh, you know, they don't really bother us on the farm here because we've got so much space. Um, but yeah. She really enjoys hunting for them. Look at this. Mimo, get it. Get it, Mimo. <laughs> Look at that crusty nose. Wait, show me that crusty nose. There it is. The olive harvest is quite a, a lengthy process, really. Um, it takes ages to get the olives out of the tree, even with one of those shakers. And you've got to make sure that you've got nets that cover the whole base. And to speed things up, 
you want to get a whole bunch of nets and you want to strategically place them around other trees so that by the time Rockin's finished, like where he is now, he can just move on to another tree and he doesn't have to wait around. So Gina is um, sorting through a whole bunch of these bigger eating type olives. Sorting out all of the sort of nasty ones because there's some there's like a little fly that lays an egg in there and then you get a little worm and you don't want to eat that. Um, so you've got to find which ones don't have the worm. And, uh, and then she's putting them inside this little tub. And Fernando's put, um, she's put a whole bunch peel. of stuff. It's like orange peel and some herbs. It almost looks like hops or something. Yeah, I don't know what the smell is beautiful though. Yeah. So today we've found some amazing progress. It's only quarter past 12. Uh, we've been working since about quarter to nine. And um, yeah, we are almost at the end of this row. So basically it's like a row of two. So we just have to work our way all the way back up again. So we started all the way there yesterday. We got about a third of the way down yesterday. Um, but the trees up on that end, I think there's a lot more water. And so they had a lot more sort of olives on them. Whereas as we've worked our way down here, the trees are a bit smaller and they don't have as much on them. But we've almost filled up this entire pickup now. And it's looking good. You can see there's a lot in here. Look at that. Nemo, where's your stick? So Gina is doing a little bit of olive cutting. So these holes over here have got like some blades inside and then you just push the olives through and it cuts them. And the reason why you need to cut them is because if you're going to make them into eating olives, you've got to cut them down the sides so that they, um, you know, so that they uh, sort of leach into the water, leach all of their bitter sort of tannins and stuff like that. And so this is quite an easy way of doing it. You just push things through the holes. Yeah, don't push your fingers too far in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there's blades in there. So there's like four blades, like one, two, three, four. Mm. You can see them. Yeah. One of the carbon fiber fingers on the olive shaker snapped and there was a little piece stuck inside which was stopping us from putting a new finger on. So it's lunchtime and Joaquin is going to the lagar and he's going to take this entire load. And there he goes, that's our first load.
it's the morning of day three and I'm just heading on down to the olive grove. I'm hoping that we might be able to finish everything today because uh, yeah, it's day three and I can really feel it in my, in my neck, my back, my shoulders. <laughs> so yesterday we set up a whole bunch of nets ready to go for the morning, but we had some strong winds and they've been blown all over the place. So I've just been collecting some of the nets. Um, but I just wanted to show you here how just with a little bit of wind, a lot of olives have already fallen off. So we've probably lost quite a few of them. Oh, here we go. Here's Joaquin Costa Fernanda. They've arrived. <laughs> Buen dia. Sí. Ay, ay. Oh, no, no, no. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> he insists, he insists on carrying that. Wow. He's a tough dude. And this is the final tree in this top part of the farm. And then after that, we have to head on down to the bottom field and uh, do this all over again. So we've just had a little pit stop. We've refueled and uh, the last tree's done up on this section of the farm. And now we just, uh, we just moved everything back down to the bottom and we're going to finish the olive harvest, hopefully today. We don't actually have that many trees down there, so uh, yeah, hopefully it's going to go quite quick. What a beautiful day this is, look at this. Ah, this is what it's all about, man. This is what it's all about. Honestly, two years ago, when I moved to Portugal, if you told me that I'd have a beautiful farm and I'd be walking, I'd have a little tractor cruising on ahead of me while we're doing the olive harvest. I'd have a beautiful little Portuguese doggy running in front of me. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'd have believed it. We definitely, definitely ended up in the right place. So we're in the bottom field. We've got quite a few big trees here. Wow, this one is absolutely full of olives. This is crazy. Okay. And we have some smaller ones. Uh, not that much smaller. They're also full. And we have a whole bunch going down to where the beehives are. And we have a few along this fence line. So we've got a fair bit of work to do. And then we have another, another couple just down there. And this is Joaquin's petrol gauge or diesel gauge. Yeah. No funciona. Ah, okay. So he's saying that his, uh, his, his petrol gauge is not functioning. And so the way to do it is just to drop a... See him, see him. Mimo, what are you doing up there? Have you not figured out how you can just come around? Come on. Come on, Mimo, use your brains. I know you're a clever girl. Got to walk around this way. Good girl, look at that. So these trees are going to be a little bit more complicated because we've got a fence in the way. And obviously you want to put nets down so that when the olives fall, they don't just land on the ground. Obviously we've got the fence in the way. So uh, the olive shaker is powered by the tractor. And I guess he's going to do this side first and hopefully catch as many as he can inside the nets. And uh, yeah, you can see they're all... Oh, there she is. Good girl. And uh, yeah. And hopefully they all get caught up in the nets. So this is definitely something that we need to get ourselves. Look at this. This is a Bedford. You're not going to see many cars going around with the name Bedford anymore. But this guy's got half a million kilometers. Still going strong. And this one over here, she's also got about half a million kilometers on her. <laughs> she's also going strong. But there's only one of her in existence on the planet. And unique and special. Yeah. <laughs> so over here, this is where we have our bees. And obviously we're going to have a tractor around here and an olive shaker. And we don't want to get stung by bees. So last night, I went to the hives and I taped them up so that the bees can't get out. Now this fencing over here, um, Joaquin put it up so that the sheep don't come and stand in front of the beehive and get stung. 
Um, so Costa and Fernando are just taking down that fence now, just so we can get to these uh, trees. And let me show you the beehives quickly. So I've put uh, just some tape along the entrance here so that they can't get in or out. I did that last night while they were all sleeping. So hopefully they're all in there and we won't have any problems because we've got a lot of olives to harvest just above them. I haven't actually managed to put the bees away properly because they're coming out of the bottom. I don't know, there, there must be like a gap underneath here and they're getting through. Oh, they're going after the camera. Um, so yeah, I haven't closed this up properly. You can see these bees are very confused. And they're making some strange noises in there. They're obviously trying to figure out why the hell they can't get in through these uh, little doorways here. I keep seeing bees just popping out the bottom though. So I'm going to need to get some kind of a tape or something. Oh. Oh, they've actually all just come out. Ah, get away, they've all just come out. So unfortunately the masking tape which I used to tape up the holes didn't hold. And uh, as you can see, there's just more and more coming out now. So yeah, uh, basically I don't want to take off the tape because we do have some trees to do. We aren't going to do these trees right here. I think we're going to do trees a little bit further away. Because obviously I don't want everyone to get stung. I'm not going to pull off this tape yet. Obviously, if I pull off this tape, they're all going to come firing out. Um, so I'm going to have to wait for a while. And all the guys that are currently out are going to have to just, like, you know, wait. Yeah, it's not ideal, but I guess we just have to work with what we've got. And it's a real pity because some of these trees, I mean, look at this one. This one's a monster and it's just covered. And I don't know if I feel safe, um, you know, having other people this close to the beehive. Um, so we're going to miss out on a little bit of trees for harvest here. On the plus side, it means a shorter day. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm going to just take off some of the tape because obviously all these bees that have just come out potentially are going to um, not be able to get back in and it's quite cold. I don't have any suit or anything on and uh, well, you know what happened the last time I messed around with these bees. So let me try and be quick. Oh, there was more than one piece of tape. <laughs> Shit. One landed on me to sting, but I got away just in time. Yeah, they're not happy. Uh, this is probably not a good idea to do without a suit. But it's only one piece of tape, so let's try and see if I can do this quick. Every time I get my arm around the corner, they come. There we go. Okay, so at least now they've got a place to come in and out. I need to get away. I'm getting buzzed. Right, so the bees weren't particularly happy. And uh, my jacket, or sorry, fleece top saved me. It was stinging me right in the neck. But fortunately, my top saved me. Sorry, B. You had to die, unfortunately. But it was for a worthy cause. You died valiantly. Whew. Okay, so I've opened up a little bit so a couple of the bees can come out. And we just have to be careful because obviously they're in stinging mode. Shame, well, you can't really blame them for uh, being defensive. And at the end of the day, someone taped up the holes of their hive and then uh, started to remove the tape. <laughs> so that was my fault. I'm so lucky though, he went straight down here and into this fleece. And all I could hear was him flying around in there and I was like running away going like, ah, I'm gonna get stung. Um, I wasn't sure, because I could hear the noise of a bee. I wasn't sure if it was one or many. But fortunately it was only one and I got saved by this top. So that's pretty lucky. Anyway, now we just need to be careful because Obviously we're working our way down and we're getting closer and closer to the hive. And I don't want Jochen to get stung, I don't want anyone to get stung really. I'm quite happy just to leave all of those trees and just do all of the ones around here and behind us, you know. 
<laughs> I was just telling I was just telling Joaquin that I'm going to film him getting stung by millions of bees. I did tell him don't worry about these trees here because obviously you know the beehives here, but they're just laughing at me and saying it's totally fine. So hopefully it is totally fine because I'm going to feel really bad if the bees come flying out here and start stinging everyone. So far so good. He's managed to do this tree. There was no bee, bee issues. So now we're a bit closer. This tree's about, I'd say, I don't know, five meters away. Um, but look, I mean, Joaquin's been farming his whole life. He knows exactly what he's doing. There's thousands of different types of bees. And, um, you know, there's hundreds, probably thousands of different types of honeybees. I'm not sure. Um, but these ones are called Iberian bees. And, um, they can get quite grumpy, they can get quite defensive, especially when you start making lots of noise in front of their hive, especially when you've just blocked their hive and then ripped the tape off. Uh, I think they might be a bit grumpy. So it's time for lunch, 105. We've got another big, big load, which is pretty awesome. I'm not sure what the plan is. I think, um, I think there's a problem with the machine. Uh, the wire is disconnecting. It's got like a cut in the wire or something. So Joaquin's gonna go and take that to get looked at or repaired. Opa. Ciao, Fernanda. I'm in here. Okay, so um, yeah, they're not going to be coming after lunch because, uh, well, the machine's broken. He's got to get the machine fixed. So they're going to come back tomorrow. Also, that gives time for the bees to calm down. So, so we're done for the day, Gina. But tea we're not time. finished. Well, it's tea time. It's, now it's time to relax. Yeah, a cup of tea. So, yeah, we'll, we'll catch up with you guys in a bit. So it's day four of the olive harvest. And, um, well, we are off to a little bit of a late start. It's like half past two. Uh, but basically, Joaquin was having problems getting the olive shaker fixed. Um, and so he phoned me earlier and said that he was going to be a little bit late. So I've just been, uh, well, I've spent most of the day editing. And now he's just called me to say that they've arrived. Um, so hopefully in the next two and a half hours, we'll be able to make a big dent. Because um, I'm quite looking forward to getting this olive harvest done. What's hard? Oh. <laughs> tudo bem? Uh, tudo bem. Vamos ver. Vai ver se está tudo bem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, centralina. Yeah? Uh, what? The, the transformer? Sim, ah, sim. ok. Vamos ver agora. Ah, no, ok. Well, we give it a try. Ok. So it looks like the, the, the transformer is what's giving the problem now. So Joaquin's just uh, getting his tractor around so that he can get to this tree over here. And I'm a little bit concerned because it looks like he wants to do this tree as well, which is right above the beehives. And obviously the beehives are open. Um, so yeah, he seems to think it's going to be okay. I hope so. Okay, so it looks like he's only going to do half of the, the tree. Hopefully none of them start to land on top of the hives, otherwise we're going to have a problem. This does concern me, but obviously you know, Joaquin's been doing this for a long time and it's not the first time he's come across bees before. So yeah, let's hope it's good. Oh, 
Well, that seemed to go okay. Um, he did the one half of the tree and um, yeah, there was no bee problems. Well, that's a relief. I was kind of worried that we were gonna have like bee stings and everyone, everyone running around. So this is Gina's 101 of olive picking. So you need to find an olive, pick an olive, put the olive in the bucket. That's really complicated. So as you can see, the sun is going down. It's quarter to five. So it's not gonna be long until we have no light, but we've gone quite far. Sadly, I don't think we're gonna to finish today. All the ones by the bees are done, and all these ones around here. These trees were absolutely full of olives. I mean, just look at the nets here. This net over here is completely full and it was completely full on this side, but we've cleared it away. So we had double that amount just on this tree. And uh, just all of these trees are just completely stacked full of olives. I mean, you can't even see in there. It's just like thick with olives. So it's taking a very long time because the trees were allowed to get way too high. Um, but yeah, we're not gonna finish today. We've still got another four trees left there. So one of the things I forgot to mention is the, uh, the leaves. Obviously, when you take them to the lagar, you don't want to have lots and lots of leaves inside because you are getting, um, you're getting oil by the weight of it. So they're not going to be too impressed with you if you bring back tons and tons of leaves. Obviously, it's almost impossible not to have some, uh, but you've got to try your best to get out as many as you can. Saúde. Right. Saúde. <laughs> Cheers. Ah, <sighs> 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 Cheers. It is day five of the olive harvest. Hopefully the last day of the olive harvest. Uh, we only have about five trees left. So I'm gonna run down there now. We're gonna hopefully smash these out. And then I can start editing and putting this all together. Uh, you know, it's Friday today. I've got to get this up on Patreon a day early. And that's right, actually, if you join us on Patreon, you get to watch our videos ad-free and before anyone else. So yeah, check it out on Patreon if you want to help support the channel and you want to see stuff ad-free. Hola, buen dia. Tudobem. So we only have these to do. One, two, three, four. Brilliant. The time now, 8.57. I reckon we're going to be done in about an hour and a half. Okay, well, we are almost one tree down and we have a problem with the olive shaker. Um, it seems to be losing power. So it kind of starts to vibrate and then it sort of loses power and starts to vibrate. Um, so Joaquin's gonna, he's gonna have to go into Funda and see if he can get it fixed. It's a real disaster because we thought that we would be finished in about an hour or so. You know, we only have a couple of trees left. So Joaquin is back. It's quarter past four. The sun goes down in about an hour and uh, yeah, let's go and see what's happening. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Vamos ver se a coisa está a funcionar. Funcionar, ok. Não havia nova. Não havia nova. Ok. Não, não. Ok. Ah. Reparou. Reparou, ok. Ok, so not a new one, it's been repaired. Uh, so the transformer is fixed. It's been attached to the tractor. And we've just tried to turn it on and nothing's happening. Uh, the problem was this transformer, but um, that's been repaired. I think he was saying that he couldn't get a new one, so he had to repair it. Ah, there we go. Okay, disaster averted. <laughs> Brilliant. So 
So unfortunately, it's not actually working as intended. It hasn't really been fixed. Like the, the power on that shaker is like sort of intermittent. And so it just doesn't have the power to really shake the olives off the trees. It's really frustrating for Joaquin as well, which is, you know, I can see that he's not happy. Um, so I did tell him that he, you know, just let's leave it. It's only a couple of trees, uh, but I don't think he wants to stop. Uh, and yeah, he's just soldiering through. I mean, there are so many olives on these particular trees. I mean, look at that. That is from, from this tree here. And there's just a giant stack all the way across here. So it finally gave up, it stopped working. And that's pretty much it. All we have to do now is get the last remaining olives inside the pickup. And that's a wrap. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. So that is the end of five exhausting days. Yay! Um, you know, without our neighbors, that would have been like an impossible task. I mean, we don't have, you know, we don't have a pickup, we don't have a tractor. We don't have nets. We don't have nets. I mean, even like the nets alone, Gina was saying, will cost a couple of hundred. Um, and then you've got the olive shaker, which is about a grand. Uh, then you've got a pickup truck, so you, you can take them to the Lagar. Uh, you know, I know there's friends of ours and they've taken it in like their van and stuff. Um, but we're looking at about two tons worth of olives. <laughs> so you can't do that in a van. Um, or the Gulf. Or the Gulf, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so special thank you to our neighbours. Uh, I know Sergio, you watch this and uh, we really appreciate you guys so much. And uh, yeah, that's the end of a... End of this year's harvest. Yeah, end of the harvest Yay! 2021. And uh, let's hope it's a nice slow year before 2022's harvest. <laughs> <laughs>